problematic yet. No, that's a support. Three students from Blackstone Valley Tech High School visited the Hopkinton Fire Department to show off their Easy Escape system. So this is Easy Escape, which is a new fire evacuation and detection system. So basically, instead of finding the fastest way out of the building, it finds the safest way out of the building. So, for example, if there's a fire in between you and an exit that is the fastest way out, it's going to tell you to not go that way and go a different way that is safer. The system is meant to help evacuate buildings during emergencies. Next step after this demonstration is to get input from the fire department here in Hopkinton, find out what changes we need to make to this design in order to have the best and most efficient system for saving people in the event of a fire. The students will be entering the design into the Skills USA competition. Skills USA is a technical competition for technical students, and so there's competitions ranging from uh, the fields of plumbing to electrical, anywhere to engineering technology or principles of engineering. This specific design will be enrolled in the um, engineering technology competition the next month, next month, excuse me, at Marlboro. Uh, basically, it is a fire detection and evacuation system that finds the safest way out and not the fastest way out. So, for example, this classroom right here, if they want to, uh, under normal circumstances, they would go out the door and around to this exit. But if this fire is on, they're going to come around the corner and they're going to run into the fire and they're going to be you know, in big trouble. But, and you, as you can see by now, the arrows are guiding them down away from the fire so that they can escape to the safest exit and not the fastest exit. Right? So, so this system also allows for numerous inputs so it can account for multiple locations or fires. So if both of these fires were on, it wouldn't allow any of these to light up and it would put indicators in both of these rooms saying there's no traditional way of exit, either find an alternative, alternative exit through a window or a side classroom door, or wait to be rescued. When these lights get indicated, there would be a panel on the side of the building where the fire fighters can go to, and the existing panel already, it would have extra information saying these two rooms are priority, they're trapped, they're high priority, go see these rooms first. And if there's a fault in the system, if maybe a wire burns off, which is unlikely, but if that happens, then it would have a null reading in the system, and if you don't flip it, it would trigger a failsafe, which would just act as a regular fire alarm. Really, I feel like a while ago, it was just a little side project for school. Kevin actually came up with the idea as his dad as an inspiration, and then it just sort of took off from there, and we're taking it to Skills USA. The students are hoping to take their design to the next level. Uh, if we go to college, uh, WPI has a fire prevention engineering program, and uh, they might want to buy this from us for because we're planning to get all the patents together. So that could be an option. Um, and then we also have this like fail-safe system. So if the building is on fire and the light gets disconnected from the computer that is doing it, it they start to flash saying that it's just, you have to, you can't trust the arrows. Use your head. Yes. Time for common sense. Yes. Back Survival mode. Good. Right. So, right now in the model, the failsafe flashing is blue. However, if it would actually be installed into a building, it wouldn't be the arrows themselves that light up. There would be this little module, this mm -hmm. circle that's along with the arrows, and it would be strobing white, just mm -hmm. like the fire alarms. I'm pretty impressed. Uh, Kevin had talked to me about the concept of this uh, escape safety and having an alternative instead of just the nearest exit. And uh, I'm envisioning him even having some other applications with this with uh, other than just fires. There's other emergencies we face in these buildings and uh, n being directed to the uh, safest access, which is maybe not the closest access, has a lot of applications, so I'm pretty impressed. And uh, I don't know if Kevin said in his introduction, but uh, he's the son of one of my firefighters, and uh, we've seen his talent for a few years now, so it's impressive to see it applied to the fire service and some of the stuff that our community faces. So, Yeah, I think there's uh, certainly a lot of applications that this could entail for uh, getting out of a building safely, um, and there's a lot of different pathways this could go. In addition to being used to escape a building in the event of a fire, 
The design also has potential to be used for other situations, such as an active shooter. <laughs> yeah, so we could put gunshot detectors in the ceiling and use that facial recognition uh, software. To well, actually, even the way even the way it is right now, I think that you could do the same thing. It's just like the, you, we know the shooter is yeah, so is it can, there it to be, so avoid yeah. It can easily be done with manual inputs from school administrators. Right. It's also easily adaptable to industrial environments, say poison gas detectors. So explain your theory. I don't want to say the name. I always the logic. The yes, yeah. the boolean. So it's boolean. all it's all based on <laughs> boolean logic. So just true or false. So the electronics and the software behind it stay relatively the same regardless of the purpose of the system. There would just be changes to the hardware mostly. 